I'm Jeremy, and today I'm going to teach you how to choose the right size fuse when adding any accessory to your car. The whole purpose of having a fuse in a car is to protect the circuit that it lives in. If something goes wrong, you want the fuse to blow. You don't want the whole wiring harness to light on fire. Now, if you have a fuse that's too small for the circuit, then what will happen is you'll be running some accessory and the fuse will pop all the time because it's just pulling too much amperage through the circuit and it'll pop the fuse. On the other hand, if you have a fuse that's way too big for the circuit, what you might do is light your wires on fire. And that's not exactly the best. So now how the heck do you decide what size fuse is right for your situation? Well, basic math, of course. Let's get an example. This is an external fuel pump. It's an AEM, part number 50105. And this thing is awesome because AEM actually has all of the specs for it on their website, which makes it super easy to wire. And on their website, it will tell you, it actually gives you a really nice chart, which tells you that this thing pulls about eight, 18 and a half amps. And it does that at about 125 uh, PSI of fuel pressure. Now, the higher the fuel pressure, the more amps it pulls. So if you're only, you know, having this thing run 30 PSI through a fuel pressure regulator, it's going to pull much less amps than 18 and a half. It's basically like worst case scenario, it shows you like 18 and a half amps. So in this scenario, if you're running a pump that takes 18 amps, usually you round up a little bit to the next size fuse and you would use a 20 amp fuse. Now, the other thing that you need to consider is the wiring size. Now, a four gauge wire like this one is overkill. A four gauge wire like this will handle 100 amps of electricity uh, over 30 feet. Now, I mentioned 30 feet because as the length of the wire goes up, the amperage goes down. It, basically, it can basically handle less amperage the longer it is. So four gauge is total overkill for this. You just don't need four gauge wire to a pump that handles uh, 18 and a half amps. But on the other hand, this is 14 gauge wire. Now 14 gauge wire can only handle 15 amps over 20 feet. So this would be way too small for the pump. And what would happen is if you, even if you put like a 20 amp fuse in the wire, this wire would start melting and heating up and the pump wouldn't be able to get the full 18 and a half amps that it possibly needs at, at full pressure. So what you need is the right size wire to go with the right size fuse to run your pump. Let's have another example. This is a seal beam seven inch high beam headlight bulb. And it's a super common one. It's part number 6024, made by Wagner in this case. And this is the super common high beam headlight that goes in like all old cars. Normally the old car will have two low beams and two high beams in this scenario. Now I did a little research and from what I found, this is a 40 watt bulb. And normally you have two of them, right? That'll be the same circuit. So you'll have 80 watts, 40 times two, right? Okay, so now we're gonna do a little math to figure out watts to amps because you need to know your amp measurement to get the right fuse. So let's do some math. All right, so here's the way it works. You have watts divided by volts, remove this, equals amps, which is what we're after. So let's do some math here. We got 80 watts, right, for these two bulbs, divided by the voltage of your car. Now, you know all, all uh, cars, well, at least this day and age, are 12 volt cars, right? Their batteries are 12 volts. But when you have the alternator cranking, it usually puts out like 13 and a half volts. So your actual voltage in your car that's probably going to be running your headlights is going to be about 13.5. I mean, you could go with 12 if you really had a crappy battery or a non-working alternator, but 13.5 is really where you're at. Now, if you do the math, this comes up to 5.92 amps. You're going to have to use your calculator for that one. I did. And once you know that this is 5.92 amps for the pair of headlights, you know that this headlight circuit will need a fuse that is just slightly higher than this. Now, fuses usually come in increments of 2.5 amps. So there's five amp fuses, 
there's seven and a half amp fuses, there's 10 amp fuses, there's 12 and a half amp fuses, there's 15 amp fuses, and it goes on and on and on. So in this case, the next step up from this would be a seven and a half amp fuse. So I, in this scenario, would use a seven and a half amp fuse for a pair of these headlights because it's 40 watts for one headlight times two because you got two headlights, that's 80, divided by the voltage, 13.5, equals math, 5.92. And then you up, up it to the 7.5 amp and you got your fuse size. But again, don't forget about your wires. In this case, once again, you don't need your four gauge wire because that'll do 100 amps, that's way overkill. And this is a 16 gauge wire. So this 16 gauge wire will do 10 amps over 20 feet. Now I keep picking the 20 feet measurement because most cars are 20 feet ish. And I figured that was a good number to go with. So this 16 gauge wire, it's copper inside. It'll do 10 amps over 20 feet. So this would technically be perfectly okay to run this headlight, uh, a pair of these headlights with a seven and a half amp, amp fuse. Now there are charts that show you what different wire sizes are rated for as far as amperages go. And these charts are awesome and they're everywhere on the internet and I'm going to link one down in my description. So be sure to check out the description because that's where you'll find a link to a chart. It's not my chart, I'm just gonna find one on the internet that's good. And there's also calculators that do this for you. Now I'll have a link to one of those as well so that you don't have to pull out a calculator. All you do is put in the 80 and 13.5 and it gives you 5.92, biggity bam, you're done. Now, you might be saying, Jeremy, I don't believe that wires light on fire. I'm a non-believer. Well, I'm gonna prove it to you. I'm gonna prove that wires light on fire. So, here we go. So let's get a close up of the good stuff. As you can see, the wire actually did burn in half and it smells really bad. Not a good decision. So this was probably around maybe 18 gauge wire and I would bet we put, I don't know, 100 amps through it. And as you can see, it lit on fire with the quickness. So this is just sort of a, uh, a warning. They always want to use the right size wire. Make sure you're using wire that is appropriate, appropriately sized for your accessory. And make sure you use fuses that are the right size for your accessory. And by the right size, I mean the right amperage rating, not physical dimensions. Because this 30 amp is, well, hold on. Let me grab a 30 amp here. Oh, I think it's this green one. Yep, so this is a 30 amp. And this is a 30 amp, but you can see they're two very different sizes. And if you can believe it, this is a 30 amp as well. So you always wanna make sure you use the right amperage rating on fuses and the right amperage rating on wires. Let's blow some fuses. All right, so as a recap, make sure that you use wire size that is a higher amperage rating than your fuse. Make sure you figure out how many amps all of your accessories are gonna be using. So if you're doing a fan or a fuel pump or a stereo system, figure out how many amps that's actually gonna draw and then figure out the wiring and the fuse to go along with that. And if you like the video, be sure to subscribe, ring the bell, leave a comment, Maybe like it, share it with a friend, all that good stuff. 
And uh, hopefully I'll see you on the next one. And until then, maybe check out one of these videos, if there's videos here. Maybe I'm imagining it. I don't know. Divided by volts. Oops, forgot the L.